I am a fat, lazy mess. The idea of wasting energy on trivial things like walking down the stairs makes me want to vomit. And as a gamer, I have always appreciated the little things the industry has done to make it as lazy as possible. So grab yourself a packet of Jaffa Cakes and enjoy my top five gaming innovations for fat wastes of space. No movement required unless you want to masturbate to this video. If you do, you have my permission. Number five, turning on your console via the controller. The TV remote was a great invention. Get home, hit your kids, sit down on the sofa and use the remote to whack the TV on and change the channels. No need to get up and walk across the living room like a peasant and waste precious calories. It took the gaming industry a while to catch up with this invention though, but we finally got it with the seventh generation of consoles. The Wii, Xbox 360 and PS3 let you turn on your console via the controller, but the fat PS3 committed a grave sin. It had a power switch on the back like a PC, meaning you had to get up to turn the thing on and off properly, which was bang out of order. Yes, you could leave it on standby, but some people's laziness extends to being unemployed, so they can't afford the bigger lecky bill. Also, the issue of destroying the planet comes up, but that's a good thing really. The sooner this planet is finished, the better, so thank you for giving us that option, gaming. Then the Xbox One tried to get us to turn on the bloody thing by shouting at it, but Microsoft failed to really realize shouting burns more calories than the controller method, the amateurs. Number four, digital distribution. Internet speeds gradually got faster and thankfully this led us to being able to download games from the comfort of our own diseased home without having to go to a shop like game. Now I don't want game elite. No, I don't need to protect my disc. I don't have brain damage. I can look after one. No, I don't want to pledge my firstborn to you. Can I just have the game please? Or CEX where you have to wear a full hazmat suit when you go in because most of the games in there look like they are riddled with STDs as well as to protect yourself against some of the subhuman scum that makes up CEX's customer base. Not only do you avoid all of that but no need to expend precious energy going outside and walking. Ugh. Number three, no need to go out to be social or racist. Being an outgoing social person or a tit as it's more commonly called is hard work. Not only do you have to go places, you also have to talk to people about their jobs, boyfriend, girlfriend and pretend you are actually interested. Nah. I can do all of that in my home thanks to Xbox Live, PSN and Discord. This also has the added benefit of actually talking about something interesting like video games. <laughs> but the main audience gaming seems to have helped is racists. You used to have to go to rallies and meetings as well as shouting at black people in the street to get your fix, running the risk of getting your head kicked in. But thanks to online gaming you can join a multiplayer game and call someone a smelly brown nick. Number two, no need Need to get a proper job. Who wants to work 9 to 5 in a physically and mentally exhausting job where you wake up every day fuming that you didn't die in your sleep? Well a lot of the population do apparently, but lazy people are more intelligent than most. We like to do as little as possible. And thanks to Twitch there is a great career option for us. Did you know that people get paid absolute gangbusters to just play video games? Well yes, and if you're an attractive female with a nice pair of tits then you don't really need to even play the game that much, just have a bit of cleavage out and let thirsty teenagers flock to donate. You can also play games professionally apparently by going pro. <laughs> Yeah, apparently people play games in front of a massive audience pretending it's a sport. Both of these career paths also give you the license to be an absolute twat. Don't be a YouTuber like me where you work your ass off to get very little return. Donate to my Patreon please. Number one, pay to win. Playing games is an exhausting exercise in itself, especially if you want to improve your skills. Hours of getting shot in the back by people with much better equipment than you and seeing it on the def cam like the game is saying oi maybe if you get your cash out you tight bastard you might be less shit this completely noble and genius business practice allows customers to just buy skill leaving gamers with more time to whine about games on the internet rather than playing them buying these microtransactions also counts as your good deed of the day remember video game companies are poor apparently so think of it as a form of charity then you can also claim the game you're playing isn't paid to win despite you being part 
part of the problem and leading to the downfall of an industry as a whole. Which is beautifully ironic really, destroying an industry by being lazy and throwing money at it. Most of the time people have to conduct investigations taking thousands of man hours. Or they usually do what Hollywood has done and turn a blind eye like nothing is wrong. Whilst rich sex offenders in $20,000 suits and dresses tell you how to live your life. Fuck the Oscars, you know? <laughs> Keep up the fire.